Hey guys, we are going to be discussing polynomial long division today, and to get us started, I'm going to be going through um, an elementary school long division problem, which is something you learned a while ago, but it's done the same exact way as polynomial long division is, so I just wanted to do this as a refresher. Um, when you are long dividing, your goal is that you can multiply this number here by something from up here to... Um, kind of be as close to these numbers as possible without going over. The interesting thing with polynomial long division, which we'll see later, is that you can actually make it exact, um, not just the highest without going over. Uh, let's get this one started. So 8 times 1 is closest without going over um, to 9. And then what you do is subtract it. Now this is an easy step when we're doing the elementary school way, but it's something very important to remember when we're doing polynomial, and you'll see why. All right, so you subtract it. Let's see, 9 minus 8 is 1, and I want to drop the next one down. So I would be looking at the number 11. All right, um, let's see. 8 would go into 11 also just once, so multiply that back through 1 times 8. 8. Subtract you get 3, and then you want to drop down that 5. So let's see, I would be looking at the number 35. Okay, 8 would go into 35 four times to give me 32, and I'm going to end up with a remainder of 3. So some of, some of you may have learned to write this as 114 remainder 3, um, if you look at it in the calculator, if you were to actually do 915 divided by 8, you would get 114.375. And you're probably like, where does that come from? Well, it comes from the fact that when you're doing a remainder, um, it's actually out of this number. So what I mean by that is it's 114 and 3 eighths. And then if you actually look in your calculator, 3 eighths is 0 0.375, so this is the correct answer. Um, these are all important steps that you have to remember when we're doing polynomial long division because they all show up in the same way. Um, so the subtraction, the dropping down, um, what we do with the remainder, putting it over this number here, all of it's going to show up when we do polynomial long division. Let's get one of those problems going. Alrighty, here we go with a polynomial long division problem with actual polynomials. Um, Alright, so you're looking to do the same sort of stuff that we did before with the elementary problem, um, but it's interesting because we have kind of two terms here. You're really just focusing on this first one. So you're asking yourself, okay, x times what would make 2x squared? Um, and the answer to that would be x times 2x would make 2x squared. And you kind of redistribute it the same way that you would do for the elementary school problems. So this 2x is going to be multiplied by x, and then also multiplied by the 5 here. So, Alright, once you do that, just like in elementary school division, you subtract. Now this can get tricky because you have a couple terms, so what I like to do is I actually, and I'm going to do this in a different color, um, I like to write it in between each of the things that I'm subtracting, and if I happen to have any double negatives, I like to make note of that. We'll do a problem with that later. Um, okay, so 2x squared minus 2x squared is 0, nothing, and then 13x minus 10x is 3x. Now just like before, you can go ahead and drop that down. Okay, now instead of um, working with this 2x here, let me get rid of that. I'm now looking at x and 3x. So it's still, still this guy and still the first term in my expression. Um, so x times what would make 3x? Um, the answer to that is 3, and you want to write that it's positive or plus 3. Okay. I redistribute now, so I'm just looking at this 3, I'm going to do 3 times x, which is 3x, and 3 times 5, which is 15. Alright, and then I would want to subtract these, and you can see I'm going to be left with no remainder at all. Remainder of 0. Um, so that is how you polynomial long divide. We're going to do a, a problem now that has a remainder. 
Okay, here we go with a problem that will have a remainder. So, like before, we are just concentrating on the first terms here. Um, what do I multiply x by to get x cubed? Um, the answer to that is x squared. I would multiply it by x squared. And I'm going to redistribute. x squared times x is x cubed. Let me just get rid of that there. Um, x squared times negative 3 is negative 3x squared. I also said that later on we'd be doing a problem that had double negatives. So take a look at this. This is where you have to be very careful um, when you're subtracting. So subtraction, subtraction, and notice, um, so x cubed minus x cubed is just zero, but over here we have negative 2x squared minus negative 3x squared. You gotta be so, so careful when you're doing these. So just um, what I would do is I would turn it into plus a positive. So negative 2x squared plus positive 3x squared, that's going to be 1x squared, and I'm going to drop down my 5x. So now I'm looking at these two terms. What do I multiply x by to get 1x squared? Well, just by x. And I'm going to redistribute this x. x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. Ooh, looks like I forgot my x. There we go. Okay. Subtracting. Again, notice you got a double negative. Be very careful. So x squared minus x squared. All right. Double negative plus positive. 5x plus 3x is 8x. Drop down my 7. Okay. Um, again, look at these first terms. What do I multiply x by in order to obtain 8x. I just multiply by 8. So I'm going to put a positive 8 up here. All right, 8 times x is 8x. 8 times negative 3 is negative 24. All righty. Subtract, subtract. And then I have, let's see, 0 there. 7 plus positive 24, which is 31. All right, now we didn't have a remainder in the previous problem. We do for this one. For the answer, you take the quotient, which is up here, um, x squared plus x plus 8, um, just like we did for the last one. But now since there's a remainder, remember what I said about the um, problem where we had 3 eighths. You take this and you put it out of whatever you are dividing by, x minus 3. And that is how you properly kind of write that remainder. It goes over what you divided by. Okay, one last case that I want to look at, and that's one where you have a squared term, but you don't have a first power term, and then you have a constant. So um, sometimes when you're dividing, you might be missing a term, kind of like this. Um, we don't see a term with g to the first. So we're going to look at what would happen when you do that. Okay, so 4g squared minus 9 divided by 2g plus 3. I'm just going to set it up so that it looks like a long division problem. Now, when I do this, I want to include my g term, except since it's not really there, I'm just going to put a coefficient of 0. But it's important to have a placeholder there so that you don't um, kind of mix anything up. Okay, 2g times 2g would make 4g squared, so I'm going to redistribute this, um, 4g squared plus 6g, and then I'm going to subtract. Okay, I would get negative 6g, and I'm going to drop down this negative 9. Now 2g times what makes negative 6g? I would say that that would be, oops, wrong color, um, negative 3. Okay, redistribute negative 6g minus 9, and looks like this one's going to work out with no remainder at all. So 6g, sorry, negative 6g minus negative 6g, so plus positive, that would be 0. Negative 9 plus positive 9, again, 0. So no remainder there. I could say that my answer is just 2g minus 3.